Welcome to another exciting Mental Model Explainer video. This is a special topic because it is actually a mental model that could even be considered a spiritual model. If we consider spiritual to be a hyper-mental state, this should make perfect sense. The model we will be covering will be referred to as the Levels of Consciousness model. We will draw deeply on information from Fred Dodson and his Levels of Energy book, as well as David Hawkins and his books, Power vs. Force, and his other book, The Map of Consciousness Explained. The idea of this model is essentially that there are levels of consciousness that can be calibrated to different energetic frequencies, emotions, or levels of thought quality. The higher the level, the more expanded and evolved the level of consciousness. Both Dodson and Hawkins calibrated their model scale from zero to a thousand, and while there are some slight differences, they are very similar in their findings. Beginning with the low levels of consciousness and working upwards, we have level 30, corresponding to shame, guilt, psychosis, humiliation, or hatred. 50, corresponding with despair, apathy, depression, and hopelessness. 80, representative of sorrow, grief, and self-pity. 100, corresponding to worry, fear, shyness, paranoia, and inferiority. 120, which is aligned to unfulfilled desire, craving, and neediness. 160, corresponding to aggression, anger, domination, and coldness. 180, representing criticism, antagonism, complaint, discontent, and blame. 190, corresponding to pride, arrogance, and superiority. Above these low levels of energy, we move beyond into more positive states of consciousness. At level 200, it corresponds to boredom, contentment, routine, and functionality. Level 275 corresponds with courage, eagerness, fun, and relaxation. 320 corresponds to optimism, willingness, kindness, and activity. 400 represents attention, interest, acceptance, and neutrality. 450 corresponds with knowledge, intelligence, and reason. Passing these mid-levels of energy, we transition towards high levels of consciousness. 475 corresponds to creativity and joy. 500 represents imagination and beauty. 510 corresponds with integrity, power, and initiative. 530 corresponds to love, appreciation, and intuition. 540 represents happiness and humor. 550 corresponds with unconditional love. 570 is exaltation and ecstasy. Level 700 corresponds with non-duality, oneness, and vast awareness. And level 1000 corresponds with infinity or divinity. What is exciting about this model is that the vibration you reside in or your level of consciousness ultimately determines your surroundings, the circumstances you find yourself in, and ultimately the reality you find yourself experiencing. It is also important not to pass too much judgment on what seem to be lower states of consciousness. They essentially are levels of energy, and more energy is not always helpful depending on where you are and what you are trying to accomplish. David Hawkins, in his book, The Map of Consciousness Explained, has this to say, The human nervous system and protoplasm cannot handle the immense energy of the infinite, except as it comes to us in the degrees that our circuitry can handle. By analogy, 50,000 volts is not very useful in the household, but 110 volts is workable. In a household, there is no judgment of the various appliances based on their electrical capacity or wattage. A refrigerator is not better than a nightlight, is it? Just so, the various levels of consciousness do not indicate better or worse, but simply different degrees of energy, each with its specific function. That said, there are certainly advantages to raising your level of consciousness if you are ready for it. The levels of consciousness are not merely linear, they are logarithmic, so each increase in level represents a significant shift in energy and perception as you move towards higher levels of consciousness. Making a shift higher can result in more positive emotions, greater clarity, and a deeper connection to yourself and the world around you. Just learning this levels of consciousness model can of itself produce positive impact. Hawkins noted in his book, Power vs. Force, that A thorough absorption of the material presented herein has been shown to be able to raise one's level of consciousness by an average of 35 points. Inasmuch as the progression of consciousness during the average human lifetime lived on this planet has been only 5 points. Such an increase of 35 in individual awareness is of enormous benefit in and of itself. And, as advanced theoretical physics and nonlinear dynamics have shown, 
Any individual increase also raises to some degree the consciousness of everyone on the planet. The levels of energy scale provides a framework for understanding the vibrational frequency of different emotions and states of being. This can be useful in the practice of the law of attraction, as it suggests that we attract experiences and circumstances that match our energetic vibration. By consciously raising our energy level and focusing on higher vibrational emotions, we can attract more positive experiences into our lives. In regards to attracting or shifting our experience of reality, Dodson had this to say, All realities are already created in infinity. You don't create any of them, and thinking you do is merely a megalomaniac delusion of the ego sold to you in the metaphysical section of a bookstore. Instead, you choose from the trillions of options already created, what to tune into and what to retrieve attention from. Dodson greatly expanded on this notion of our state of consciousness, aligning with what essentially amounts to a pre-existent parallel universe in his book Parallel Universes of Self. And this idea is echoed in Russian physicist Vadim Zelin's book, Reality Transurfing. This notion of a change in our consciousness leading to a change in our reality is not merely modern sci-fi philosophy. It is found in major religions as well. As I have the most familiarity with the biblical tradition, I will attempt to give some correspondence to ancient religious writings that may have at least some agreement. While this spiritual mental model does not require one to be a believer of a certain religion, it seems helpful to show examples from a major religion where this model is corroborated in Scripture. In the biblical book of Proverbs, it says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7 And keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Proverbs 4, 23 Just like the mythical Jacob's Ladder, the ancient Christian artwork, the Ladder of Divine Ascent, is also symbolic of the idea of levels of consciousness leading from lower levels up to the heavenly realm. Here we see people rising from suffering states of consciousness towards the divine in this 12th century artwork. From the Gospels in the book of Matthew, it states, The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. This is important when you look at the Greek meaning of eye from this verse, which has the meaning of faculty of knowing, which of course is a synonym of consciousness. We could therefore read this verse as, The lamp of the body is the consciousness. If therefore your consciousness is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your consciousness is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. David Hawkins in his book, The Map of Consciousness Explained, had this to say of the teaching of Jesus. Christ's teaching was simply to avoid the negativity, calibrated levels below 200, and the goal of his teaching was for his followers to reach unconditional love, calibrated at 540. He knew that once the level of unconditional love was reached, the soul's destiny after death was certain and the soul was safe. Lesser-known quotes attributed to Christ may symbolically point to ideas such as removing the ragged garments we clothe ourselves with, which could mean our habitual thoughts and state of consciousness we carry with ourselves wherever we go, such as from this verse of the Gospel of Thomas. His disciples asked, On which day will you make yourself known to us? Lord Jesus replied, when you rid yourselves of guilt and shame and tear off your old rags and trample them beneath your feet like children, and also the idea of raising ourselves into a state of peace rather than strife such as from this verse from the Gospel of Thomas. You yourselves find the place of peace within, or you too will be like dead lambs and be eaten. Clearly, the levels of consciousness model can be corroborated by biblical sources, Gnostic sources, as well as religious sources not mentioned, including Hinduism, and Buddhism. The model also has some alignment with models like Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the concept of chakras in yoga and Eastern philosophy. However, it is important to note that the levels of energy scale is not a scientifically validated model, since it is somewhat spiritual or hypermental in nature, and should be taken as a subjective framework for understanding different levels of consciousness and energy. So, how can we make use of this powerful, yet subjective model. Some interesting points about working through the levels of consciousness have to do with transitioning up levels. It is very unusual to make large leaps, even in a lifetime. 
While it is possible to make great progress, especially when you are aware of the model and its structure, it is usually best not to aim too far. It is much easier to go from level 160 anger to level 190 pride rather than to try and aim for level 570 ecstasy. Some people choose to do so with the use of drugs. However, the ultimate result of that approach typically plunges you back into the lower levels after the effects have worn off, where it is not unusual to find yourself worse off than where you started. If you are trying to help others ascend, knowledge of this model is very helpful. You can assess where they are roughly at on the scale and then aim to guide them a step or two ahead. It also helps to know that when someone is in the low levels of energy, even when they are advancing, they may still be highly unpleasant to be around, and caution should be exercised. Sometimes people need to work through some difficulties on their own, but if someone is open to learning this model, it can sometimes be helpful, especially if they receive it without judgment. The levels of consciousness model is particularly suited for personal use. As you internalize the model, you can more easily remember its relative levels and assess your approximate position throughout the day. You may find yourself at low levels of consciousness for certain periods and perhaps higher levels for other periods. Don't be ashamed if you find yourself in lower levels of energy. Just note that if you're spending weeks at a time in certain levels, it is more likely that it can become habitual. A few days may be natural, but when that length stretches into a week or more, we need to be aware and make adjustments into a healthier, more positive state if we can do so, in order to avoid getting stuck. Wherever you find yourself, just remember to take it a few steps at a time. Don't aim for huge leaps and recognize the benefits of each level relative to your life goals. We will now work our way through the levels to both solidify our understanding as well as add some additional details such as the life view, typical view of God or a higher power at that level, and the overall process at work. At level 30, we may find ourselves experiencing feelings of humiliation, shame, guilt, psychosis, or hatred. God or a higher power could be seen as despising. Our life view would most likely be hateful in some manner. What is interesting about level 30 is how a person can be at this level both by being hateful as well as from just dwelling in a state of shame and guilt. This could also lead to psychosis, and the person very well may be a victim who just happens to be stuck in feelings of humiliation, guilt, or shame. A lesson for those stuck here would be to realize that these feelings must not be permanent. There is a path out, and although the path most likely leads through sorrow or fear, the path out must be taken in order for things to improve. Feel the fear and do it anyway. This is the beginning of courage. At level 50, we may find ourselves in despair, feeling hopelessness, depression, and apathy. God or a higher power may still seem vindictive or condemning. Our life view may be one of evil or hopelessness. All may seem hopeless and pointless, but there is a path forward and it likely involves being fearful and there is much to worry about, it seems. You are almost able to be angry at the situation as you look for a way out. At level 80, we can be feeling sorrow, grief, or even self-pity. Our life view may be one of tragicness, and we may view God or a higher power as uncaring. We are steeped in regret. We at times may find ourselves afraid or thinking of the things we desperately need. These may be the beginning of what could be considered a goal, a hint at a path forward. At level 100, we mostly find ourselves in fear. Perhaps we retreated deep within ourselves in shyness or paranoia due to feelings of inferiority. We have many worries. Our view of God or a higher power is one of a punitive being. Our life view is frightening to us to think about. Occasionally we get angry at where we are. If we could just channel that anger towards something we could be proud of, something that we won't get punished for and suffer more of our worst fears. At level 120, there are things we desperately need. Our desires compel us to try and fulfill our needs and desires. We experience powerful cravings. Our view of God or a higher power is of a being who denies us of our desires. Our life view is one of regular disappointments. Occasionally, we find ourselves angry at our unfulfilled desires and start criticizing those around us. But it feels like progress. At level 160, we are truly angry and when we are not angry, we find ourselves cold or aggressive. When possible, we dominate others. 
our view of God or a higher power would be one who is vengeful. Our life view is antagonistic with hints of hatred. When we are not pure anger, we find ourselves criticizing others or even feeling superior to them. It feels slightly better than pure anger. At level 180, we are highly critical, ready to complain or blame others for the myriad of problems. Our view of God or a higher power is of a vengeful God. We complain about how He is handling things if we believe at all. Our life view is one of antagonism. Sometimes our criticisms are so on point that we feel proud of our well-aimed arguments. But sometimes even that gets boring. But we feel a little better. At level 190, we are feeling arrogant, proud, superior, and full of scorn. Our view of a higher power or God is one of indifference. Our view of life is of a demanding existence. We proudly display our superiority, but occasionally find ourselves feeling bored or perhaps content and we even find ourselves thinking of relaxing for a bit someday. Things feel a bit better. At level 200, we find ourselves recognizing the value of a routine. We catch glimpses of true contentment, even if we are usually bored. A certain amount of self-discipline just seems right. Our life view may seem uneventful or boring, but it is also more peaceful. We even find ourselves fantasizing about having the courage to do something really fun. We feel better. At level 275, we are actually having fun and relaxing. We demonstrate courage by taking risks when it is important to us, and we find ourselves meeting life with eagerness. Our view of God or a higher power is one of a permitting force. Our life view is summed up as feasible and full of possibility. We even find ourselves doing the occasional act of kindness just for fun and noticing a renewed optimism for life. At level 320, we are in a steady state of kindness, willingness, and active optimism. We embrace life with a true optimistic attitude and seek to share some of our hope with others through a kindly manner. Our view of God or a higher power is one who is inspiring. Our life view is hopeful and optimistic. We experience genuine positivity towards oneself and others. We find ourselves with moments of feeling a bit more laid back, willing to learn, and better able to view things from others' viewpoints. At level 400, we are at the level of acceptance, neutrality, attention, and interest. We consider realities other than our own, and often choose a more neutral higher ground, like Switzerland. Our view of God or a higher power is one of enabling. Our life view is more satisfactory in nature. We start to catch glimpses of higher thinking as we occasionally reason through a subject we may be thinking on, a taste of things to come. At level 450, we are engrossed in reason, intelligence, and the joy of knowledge. We may feel at home contemplating the works of ancient Greek philosophers who themselves were often calibrated at about this level in many instances. We may have a job such as a scientist, inventor, or other intellectual pursuit where we can appreciate the power of knowledge or wisdom. Our view of God or a higher power may be one of wisdom. Our life view seems very meaningful. As our intellectual pursuit deepens, we may find ourselves catching glimpses of the more creative applications of our interest. At level 475, we are at the realm of creativity and joy. While joy has been felt from time to time at levels beneath 475, we find ourselves in a much more steady state of joy. We are at a level where we can follow our bliss and enjoy our natural creativity. There are powerful shifts in our sense of self and in views towards self and others we are starting to notice as we follow our map of consciousness higher. At level 530, we are in a state of love, appreciation, and greater intuition. We have experienced love from time to time in lower states, but here awareness is ever-present and love permeates everything. At this state, beings at this level are unfortunately rather rare and more so as we go higher. 85% of the world's population calibrates under 200. But we are special. We view a higher power or God as loving, and our life view is quite benign as we dwell in a state of reverence. Knowing that states above 530 are hardly ever experienced by anyone who is currently alive on planet Earth, we will view them from a distance with a sense of love and respect. At level 540, we see a state of pure happiness and humor. The laughing Buddha imagery is drawn to mind, and that rare individual who dwells in a constant state of happiness and hilarity. At level 550, we have the level of unconditional love, a rare state, 
but the level of salvation is taught in Christianity, for example. According to Frederick Dodson, the actual reason Jesus Christ came to planet Earth is because humans were not capable of achieving enlightenment, 600, as taught by Buddha. And so Jesus acted as an intermediate who would vouch for the souls that had died and help them ascend from there onward. Level 550, one's will is said to be surrendered to divine will. There is a unity of being permeated by unconditional love. At level 600, we see the level of peace, serenity, bliss, and lightness. This is the level commonly associated with enlightenment in Eastern traditions. It is a state of deep tranquility with full awareness and presentness. It is a peace of oneness with infinity, a rare state of sages and saints. At level 700, we have a state of non-duality, vast awareness and oneness, an indescribable vastness of awareness. Levels 700 and above are states normally said to be experienced as a soul and not an embodiment, difficult to even conceive of while on earth. At level 1000, we have the level of divinity or infinity. It is said to correlate with divine figures such as Jesus Christ, Buddha, and Krishna, for example. As Fred Dodson in his book on this subject, Levels of Energy, said, Once learning about energy levels, it can take a lifetime for the mind to grasp the enormity of it all but that happens all by itself once the general levels are understood. That means knowing the scale alone will heighten your awareness and facilitate your spiritual growth without any specific practice or exercise required. Knowledge is power, and hopefully knowing this mental spiritual model will help guide you and others into better states of consciousness. If you found value in this explainer video, please consider sharing it with someone you think could benefit. And of course, remember to subscribe for more interesting videos in the future. Thanks for watching.